Section 20, Ethnological Work Although Powell is probably known to a greater number of persons as a geologist than as an ethnologist, his publications on ethnology and anthropology, and on the philosophical problems into which the study of these sciences led him, are apart from purely administrative reports twice as numerous as those on geology. And it appears that his contributions to the content of the sciences of earth and of man stand in about the same proportion. His active interest in ethnology began when he came into contact with the Indian tribes of western Colorado and eastern Utah in the summer of 1868. It was probably reinforced by Secretary Henry's advice that special study of the Indians should be made during the canyon journey of the next year. But more important than its origin is the nature of the interest that Powell felt in ethnology, for it had the merit of being characterized by a willingness to recognize other standards than those of the civilized races of mankind, by a ready capacity to appreciate the position of the other fellow, and by a sincere respect for humanity in all its stages of development. These are largely matters of temperament, not of learning. They are of prime importance to an ethnologist in the office as well as in the field. Gilbert gave emphasis to this point when he wrote that Powell, quote, realized, as perhaps few had realized before him, that the point of view of the savage is essentially different from that of the civilized man, that just as his music cannot be recorded in the notation of civilized music, just as his words cannot be written with the English alphabet, so the structure of his language transcends the formula of the Aryan grammars, and his philosophy and social organization follow lines unknown to the European. End quote. The warm-hearted sympathy that was the basis of Powell's success in the field study of Indian tribes is nowhere better illustrated than in the comment he makes on the fate of the three men who left his party and climbed out of the Colorado Canyon in August 1869, as already briefly narrated. The story was learned a year later by Jacob Hamblin, a Mormon missionary among the Indians who spoke their language well and had great influence among them, and who was with Powell's party in the summer of 1870 on the plateau north of the canyon, not far from the point where the three men had ascended from the river the year before. Quote, they came upon the Indian village almost starved and exhausted with fatigue. They were supplied with food and put on their way to the settlements. Shortly after they had left, an Indian from the east side of the Colorado arrived at the village and told them about a number of miners having killed a squaw in a drunken brawl, and no doubt these were the men. No person had ever come down the canyon. That was impossible. They were trying to hide their guilt. In this way, he worked them into a great rage. They followed, surrounded the men in ambush, and filled them full of arrows. End quote. Powell's comment on this pitiful story contains not a thought of revenge or even of punishment. He realized that primitive and advanced men do not think alike and he respected the Indian's idea of justice. Quote, that night I slept in peace, although these murderers of my men and their friends, the Uin Carets, were sleeping not five hundred yards away. While we were gone to the canyon, the pack train and supplies, enough to make an Indian rich beyond his wildest dreams, were all left in their charge and were all safe. Not even a lump of sugar was pilfered by the children. End quote. Colorado River, 130-131. Some years later, Powell explicitly stated his creed in this matter. Quote, 
When I stand before the sacred fire in an Indian village and listen to the red man's philosophy, no anger stirs my blood. I love him as one of my kind. End quote. Philosophical Bearings of Darwinism, Washington, 1882, page 12. Powell's interest in Indian customs and languages was at first combined with some attention to problems in the practical administration of Indian affairs. He was appointed by Congress in 1872, a commissioner to examine the condition of certain tribes in the far west, and his report, made jointly with G. W. Ingalls, was his first ethnological publication, 1874. It was at this time that he discussed the causes and remedies for the inevitable conflict that arises from the spread of civilization over a region previously inhabited by savages. But in his later studies, the Indians, unmodified by contact with the whites, were his subject. Secretary Henry of the Smithsonian Institution who had early given Powell encouragement and assistance in the direction of ethnology, was greatly impressed with the exploration of the Colorado. Regarding the report upon which he later wrote, quote, The whole work will do honor to the appreciation by the government of scientific information of this kind, as well as of the ability and perseverance of Professor Powell and his assistants. End quote. It was evidently on the basis of this good opinion that, after Powell had turned from geology to ethnology in the early 70s, much material collected by the Smithsonian Institution was placed in his hands. This included 670 Indian vocabularies, which had previously been submitted to Trumbull, and it was upon this extended basis that Powell prepared his first Introduction to the Study of Indian Languages, 1877, an enlarged edition of which was published three years later. End of section 20